Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Once again, I have some answers to your questions, so stick around. Okay, it's 2019. Last year this time, we went ahead and did a questions and answers video, labeled that questions and answers part one. So I thought, 2019, let's do it again. Kick this off with question number one. You know what? I'm not gonna answer the question. No, I am not Rourke from Call of Duty Ghosts. And I'm still not Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War. Okay, moving right along. Do you ever plan on teaching classes on the West Coast? Now, I've covered this before in a couple previous videos. Yes, there's plans in the works right now to move out west. I'm waiting for a couple individuals to get trained up in the Pathfinder instructor course. Once I have them and I have my helpers, I guarantee you we're moving out west. But in the meantime, if you want to train with me or be part of the Pathfinder system, go to the Self Reliance Outfitters website. Click on classes, scroll over, you're gonna see basic, intermediate, pioneer, and advanced classes. Open those up, click on whatever tickles your fancy, pick your class, and there's probably about a 99% chance that I'm gonna be there. If you wanna guarantee that I'm there, hit me up on one of my social media websites. Contact me, and I'll do everything in my power to be there for you. Next question, what bushcraft channels do you watch and what other channels do you recommend? Well, I've kind of somewhat answered this before. Um, for me, most of the channels that I watch are at my level or smaller. And the reason why is because they have good information. What I found is people who are climbing that ladder work the hardest. They're trying to establish themselves, their personality, their character, what they're all about, what the channel's all about. And what I found is climbing that ladder myself, taking nine years just to get 150,000 subscribers, that majority of, I can't speak for all, not all, but most, high-end channels, meaning hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands, tend to watch the smaller channels. And there's very few that actually give them credit for what they do, or put them out there and say, hey, we're giving a shout out to these smaller channels. And what I found, though, is a lot of the higher channels copy the smaller channels. And because of YouTube algorithms, what tends to happen is their channels are favored, their videos don't slow down, and they're making money hand over fist. Because they're that good. When in reality, they're getting ideas, they're reading people's books, they're watching smaller channels, they're in a learning process as well. They just got lucky. Now, there's a few that I mentioned in my first video that I give shout-outs to. He and she both know who they are. And I appreciate them. They circulate my videos. They allow me to post my videos. They watch my videos. And it means a lot to me because they're way up here and I'm still small potatoes. So what I've tried to do is make it a goal of mine to give shout outs to smaller channels. Not only because I watch them, because they're good people, they know what they're doing, they're highly skilled, and they're simply not being heard. So as far as my recommendation for channels, watch my first video, I list all of them. Now in addition to those channels, there's a few more I want to talk about. First one's going to be the Grey Bearded Green Beret. Josh Inyard, outstanding, he's a Pathfinder instructor, has a voice, and he definitely needs to be heard. Another one, the Bearded Burton. Now, as far as non 
bushcraft channels that I watch, there's so many I can't even name them. But the one that I'm hooked on right now is R and K all day. Rob and Christina. Um, what they do, if you haven't seen this channel, they go out and they find abandoned hospitals, abandoned buildings, stadiums, psychiatric wards, prisons, homes that are out in the woods that are left out there for 20, 30 years. And they go in there, and I'm hoping, I'm assuming they're doing it legally, but they film the entire house. They show pictures of the people. They show, they found food still sitting on a table from 20 years ago. Like people just vanished. Like, you know, it's a leftovers TV show. They're just sitting there and all of a sudden gone. Or the earth just opened and swallowed them up. Where'd they go? I don't know. Um, crazy. Um, they found firearms. They found drugs. They found money. It's insane. But what I like the most about it is how they film it. They film it. And they give that eerie perspective. But at the same time, it's almost like it's a time capsule. At some point, that house or stadium are going to be destroyed or bulldozed and they're gone forever. But that video should always be there. And you can go back there and check it out and actually see what life like, what life was like for those individuals. And they do a really good job. Check them out. RNK all day. Rain's starting to come down now, but hey, if it ain't raining, we ain't training. Um, next question. It's crazy the ink's getting all smeared on here. Nice. Um, it, it's a two-part question. It says, what is your take on the reality of survival, and how often should I practice survival? Well, the reality of survival has so many different avenues. The reality of survival for shelter making, fire making, reality of having a bow drill. Is that even worth making? Should you have five or six lighters on you? things like that. But what I'll try to do is I'll try to answer the second part with the first part. So how often should I practice survival? Well, here's my answer. I don't think anybody should ever practice survival. Um, you practice survival skills, woodworking skills, bushcraft skills, bow hunting skills. Um, what I mean by this is simply to me, survival means you're going to die unless you do something right now, immediately, to change that situation. So, do I think people should go deliberately out there with nothing and try to survive? No. And even if they tried to, it's not real because why? They can quit. You can quit anytime, unless it actually is real. People who survived POW camps are survivors. People who lived through the Holocaust, those are survivors. People who went to you know, spent 25 to life in cell block two and got out. That's a survivor. Um, people who were in major wars that were detrimental to our country's way of life, those are survivors. They didn't have a choice. You survive or you die. Um, so I don't think anybody should ever go out and practice survival. Now, practicing survival skills to get better, I fully believe that practice makes you better. Practice always makes you better. You're never going to be perfect. Um, we digress a little bit. Even the Alone Show. I have two personal friends of mine that were on that show um, that they did whatever it takes or whatever it took. They did every trick in the book and in the end they went home because they knew they could. They could push that button and they're out. Um, not a hit on them. They did a great job. In my opinion, their channel should be a million subscribers right now just for the skills they showed. But again, back to the algorithms, because of nobody wants to see what they do, nobody cares. Um, and other people who were there for one or two days, I, I don't know, I don't want to go down that road. Um, point being, the reality of survival has so many different avenues, I can't answer that question. But the second part, I, I think that you should never go out and practice survival. Because once you, I'm not gonna say master those skills, once I, I should say, once you gain experience from practicing those skills, when something occurs, not if, when it occurs, you'll be comfortable, confident, and you can look at it as though you're inconveniently camping. And it won't be a big deal, especially if you're with your family, friends. If you spaz, they're gonna spaz. They gonna look at you and say, he has all this training, he has all this gear. Look at him, oh my God, we're dead. No. 
cool, calm, collect, polite, and courteous at all times. So I'm sorry it's a long-winded uh, answer to your question, but practice the skills. Make you a better person in the long run, more comfortable, more confident. Moving right along, will you do a video on a mini kit slash Altoids tin? No. And here's why. Not to take anything away from anybody. Um, there's several ways I can answer this and I'm not step on anybody's toes. I think that your skill set would be God if you can go out there with nothing and live. Right below God, if you have an Altoids tin this big and you're out there and you're able to live okay when I look at survival I'm looking at 72 hour scenario and I carry my 10 items my 10 C's so that I am inconveniently camping I pose the question why would you already want to limit or why would you want to limit your already limited gear think about that the 10 C's alone is a mini kit, a mini EDC that I should have with me at all times. If I have an Altoids tin, there's no shelter in there. Maybe you can get a knife blade or a razor blade. Um, it's popular right now, it's going around the net again. It probably took five years to come full circle and now we're doing it again. If you want good ideas, check out Jamie Boggs and Jason Hunt over at Campcraft Outdoors. They have a current contest going on. I think it's over now, but there's a lot of great ideas. I enjoy watching it because I'm like, wow, I didn't think about that. Or that's cool. Or that guy did that. Or look at it. He's got five ways to start fires in there and a knife inside there. I'm like, dude, that's insane. But for me, I don't think I'm comfortable or confident yet to say, here's a razor blade and a piece of bike tube to start a fire. And I'm out there doing it. So... I'm not going to in turn teach somebody to do that unless I've done it and been successful at it and been out there for several days and dental floss for snares actually works and I'm fishing out there with this stuff and it works. It's called applied theory. So until I can apply those theories, I'm not going to tell you to do it or show you how to do it. And most people, not all, but most can make the gear, copy the gear, but they're not using the gear. So again, check out Campcraft Outdoors, Jason Hunt, Jamie Boggs. Check out their ideas. Good to go. Now we're getting wet. All right. Moving on here. I noticed that your knife and pack have changed. What do you now recommend? Okay, well, I don't recommend anything. I just do things that work for me. Like I mentioned in my previous video, the best knife is the knife that you have on you. The best pack is the pack that you have on you. Um, but I've changed between the PKS or Pathfinder Knife Shop knives and I got bounced between them and the Mora. And so right now I'm rolling with the Mora Garberg and its sister, the stainless steel version. So they sharpen up really well. They got the Scandi grinds on them. It's the same exact blade as the Mora Bushcraft Black except for full tang. We've beat the hell out of these things at the school, even the stainless version. And honestly, it's a great knife. The only knife I own that's stainless is this one. Oh, that's going to change. But right now, the only one I have is this one. So I'm very happy with them. Um, zero complaints. I've actually seen a lot of people taking these handles off and tricking them out with wood and micarta, and they're beautiful. And I really think that, you know, Mora should consider doing something like that or providing kits for people to make some more sales. But yeah, the more Garbergs, very happy with these knives. Now, both those knives and a whole lot more can be found on my Amazon influencer page, which is located on my main YouTube page. As far as my pack, I have several packs. Um, my go-to is always gonna be the Alice pack, the medium version uh, for long 
Expeditions is going to be the larger version of the Auspac. But the one I'm hooked on right now and that I've given a lot of play to is this Savota Jakari, the medium version. This is a Finnish or Finland's Border Patrol bag. And you can see it's got the Molly webbing all across here for any attachment that you want. We have the lumbar support here, and the waistband, the waist straps. And I believe it's around 30 liters. And I think an Alice pack is about 35. Now, the only downside to this is it's just an open pouch. You open, pop, pop the lid off, and it's just open straight down inside there. But you can add side pouches if you want to. You can hook a nice 19 inch axe to this. It's good to go. So I've used this several times in different states, as well as over in Scandinavia. If you haven't seen that video, it's four days in Sweden. Outstanding. Check it out. But this thing survived all those elements over there as well. And it was perfect. Fits my back perfectly. It actually rides up kind of high. Outstanding bag. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and change gears. I just want to spend a few moments in the beginning here to answer a few questions that I'm constantly asked. What I'll try to do is I'll make an effort to do this again, but not do it after another year. Um, I kind of fell behind with all the videos, teaching gigs, um, my workload at my day job. Um, but you know what? I'm getting it done. I'm balancing all of it and really hoping that this coming year is my year. Um, we have 100 and 53,000 subscribers and change. My goal by this time next year, I want that doubled or tripled, but I think I can get away with doubling that. And once again, that's, well, it falls on me to make the videos, but it falls on you all to watch the videos and sp share them, spread them around and everything you're doing, I appreciate. Um, I just ask that you continue to do it. Let's meet that goal, 300,000. Now, I wanna talk about my current 150k subscriber giveaway if you haven't seen that video yet i'll post a icon somewhere up here or here um, click on that youtube card it takes you to that video watch that video and follow the simple rules and good luck first place is going to be a free basic class at the pathfinder school runner-up is going to be a dirty by design pathfinder knife shop grizzly So check out that video. Now as far as 2019 for me, I touched on that. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing as long as you keep watching it. Now do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, I'm going to catch you next time.